Dirty Harry famously said that the 44 Magnum was the most powerful handgun in the world. Show them the round. However, there's now a new boss in town, Mr. Clint Eastwood, and that is the raging, the raging, the raging hunter, raging hunter. Anyhow, so here's a 44 Magnum, and then here is the 500 Smith and Wesson. Now there are more powerful pistol cartridges. This is the most powerful production handgun round currently made. And the question in my mind is, it's made for hunting big game, but what if you're hunting people? Yeah, we're like big people. Like, what if they're really big? Lit. We're not saying that. We'll make sure we bleep that out. We are saying that people are getting kind of big, so maybe you need a bigger round. And when you're hustling, bustling just to get the remote, you're probably gonna die. But before we get into that, we of course have to thank the biggest sponsor of the channel, who is whom, Charles? Scamming Dumb Indians. The Snoring Desert Institute has been a big sponsor of the channel for a long time. We can't thank them enough. What are they good for? They're good for metallurgy, spells, guns, archaic magic. Archaic if magic. you're looking to get into gunsmithing, they are the people to go to. We cannot thank them enough for sponsoring the channel. Go and give them some love. And of course, who can we not forget? Kenny? Primary Arms. What else about Primary Arms, Kenny? They have cool stuff. They have cool stuff. To be to be yeah. to be clear, Micah is with his baby because he has had a new baby, so we have Kenny. Yeah, so he's pretty selfish with his time right yeah, now. Yeah, very selfish. Primary Arms has awesome optics, awesome prices. We love them. We love the. Uh, which, what's your favorite thing? My favorite thing is if you if you send an email at 5:30 a.m. and p.m., you might get a discount. Don't do that. My favorite thing is our one to eight compact. We love that optic. Go and give them some love. And of course, we cannot forget Mantis. If you're looking to enhance your dry fire a little bit, they make some awesome products that allow your, your gun when you dry fire to shoot a little laser. There's also programs that go along with it. We do a lot of dry fire training here in Grantham. We're big believers in it, and they make awesome products. So we're really happy to have them as a sponsor. Go and check them out. Big love to them. And unlike the TV that you're watching this on or the phone you're watching this on, AAC ammunition is made where? In America. That's right, because America. America is better than literally any other commie or socialist or just crap country, south or north of Yeah, France order. is doing great right now. <laughs> oh yeah, it's pretty lit. Do you think the uh, Democratic Party would uh, be okay with like a revolver? Uh, probably not if they actually knew how guns work. Uh, may, maybe maybe their position will change after they watch this video and complain about it to their wife's boyfriend. So anyhow, right here we have a ballistic dummy from Ballistic Dummy Labs. Uh, these are a very good analog for uh, humans, and we know that these are not human, correct Charles? And then we have uh, human analogs for organs and bones, and those do pretty well. These do fairly well. We also have fluid in here as well to uh, simulate the fluid dynamics that occur in the human body. So overall, we have a fairly good representation, and we should get fairly realistic results. Um, because as many people have told us, they have a little bit of PTSD from watching this if they've seen it actually happen. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I wish I had PTSD. Uh, we want to uh, congratulate Charles. He's actually graduated from fake medical school and is a fake doctor now. Yeah, I've been going around and diagnosing people with leprosy. Just because they're homeless. Is leprosy still around? I don't know, I tell people. So I've actually never fired the 500 Smith & Wesson, funny enough. Have you fired one, Charles? No. Never. There you have it. So this is going to be my first time firing it, and we'll be doing a gut shot as long as I don't flinch like a bitch. Oh. Actually kind of hurt a little. <laughs> it actually wasn't pleasant at all. Wow. Holy shit. Okay, let's, uh, let's go see what that did. Oh, so, what's the best way to say this? Perfect size. Pistols typically behave in a certain manner, which is they typically don't do anything crazy in the human body. They typically enter and exit around the same size and they don't really do much. So let's take a look at this guy right here. So this has like the flowering and the, the opening effect that we often see from extremely good pistol rounds or uh, rifle rounds. The flowering, you can see the kind of wound channel through there, is pretty intense. It's a fairly large entrance wound. And then if we come to the back, zero problem punching straight through and blowing straight through the spine. Would With you the, say that it blew its back out? It behaved very similarly to a shotgun round, like a slug. It just, it was a pain train. 
What are you doing? Are you trying to connect your fingers right now? <laughs> I'm trying. I can feel something in there. Is that called the, uh, it's the Adele, the hello from the other side. Next shot is gonna be uh, center on the chest. We have the uh, slow-mo set up behind so we can watch the exit. Um, what do you think is gonna happen, Charles? Honestly, I'm hoping that you shoot it and it just hits the camera. That'd be so sick. Fuck. <laughs> Yeah, so let's take a look at the front first. Um, so we have the left lung, and uh, we actually slipped between the ribs, but it looks like it still shattered the bottom rib, uh, despite that. It utterly crushed the lung, there's no problem there. And when we come to the back, once again, it displayed little care for the uh, spine. Pretty disgusting. Overall, again, another absolutely killer shot. Yeah, I think. <laughs> Honestly, if it's big game or um, that one species that complains about not having enough uh, seats on an airplane, it's going down, dude. Next up, we're gonna be doing a oblique shot. We'll do uh, both lungs and through the heart, hopefully. And this is going to be a lot of tissue. We'll see how it performs. Dude, this thing has such a crazy report to it. Dude, after it, after it left, you could see the trail of the round as it continued for another 15, 20 feet. <laughs> it was wild. Holy shit! Okay, let's take a, let's take a look. So to be clear, this is one of the more difficult shots for anything to do. Um, shots typically aren't dead on. You typically have a lot of tissue, like arms. So it entered right here underneath. It would have gone through the arm had we had one. Uh, entered through the lung. Continued through, you can kind of see the uh, amount of damage and then just exited completely through the lung again. That's a lot of power. Absolutely wild. Next up, we're gonna be doing back of the head because, well, we know it's gonna kill. I just, just interested. on YouTube? That's the gnarliest shot I've seen on one of these dummies so far. Yeah, I do like the, the tank like obliterated yeah. it. But uh... <laughs> no more mine. Okay. You wanna meet my ex-girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> let's do uh, let's do an oblique shot through here. I think that would be perfect. Oh, that was a wild shot. Look at this. Look at that expansion. That's like, look, no, come over here to this side. I have never seen expansion Whoa. like that. I've never even seen a shotgun slug do that. Look at this. So it, it traveled straight through, took, taking tons of bone fragments with it, and it just exited, no problem. Wasn't it David Hogg who was like, if you need more than like seven shots, you're a bad shot or something like that. I think he he either said that and or please somebody come put my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Did he, what is he? What is he in an ethically non-monogamous relationship, <laughs> aka a cuck? Look at that. So, medically, you're gonna start having problems right there. That's gonna cause some issues. I would say this guy's dead. I don't know if there's much more we can do at this point. Yeah, I would, uh, I don't think I'd, I'd try and resuscitate at this point. Can you imagine if they found out about this round in Chicago or Baltimore? Hey, do you wanna try firing it? Yeah, let's do it. Do you? Yeah, dude. Okay. As a quick note with these uh, 
high uh, recoil revolvers, if you're not prepared for them, you're not familiar with them, uh, you can actually double fairly easily. Have you ever seen that where like a person fires and the recoil oh, causes yeah. their finger to hit again and it like, fires again? Yeah. Do you think you can hit the target out there? The target out there? Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Did you load two or one? Just one. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna, there's a target about 180 yards. It's kind of small, but it can reach it. You ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna hit it. Super high. Really? Yeah, you were like probably 12 feet high. 12 feet high? Yeah. Were you aiming dead on? <laughs> Try it again, dude. How was the recoil? It sucks. Yeah, it's terrible. I don't enjoy it at all. Oh! oh! So, we've gotten to the end. 500 Smith & Wesson. Being the most powerful commercially produced handgun round, uh, obviously it's gonna perform fairly devastatingly on a human analog. I think we all expected that. Um, I think the thing that needs to be said is how horrible it, it is to shoot this thing consistently. It kind of sucks. It's not, you get, you get two or three rounds in and you just, it's just, it's no fun, man. I get it. I get there's going to be guys out there like, I shoot 500 Smith & Wesson all day, every day, practice like, you know, you probably don't. I'm sure there's people out there, but I would much rather carry a uh, F45, a 9, because that makes much more sense to me. Uh, that Those both perform extremely well uh, and are proven stoppers. I get it, this is gonna be much more devastating. I don't know a lot of guys carrying this unless they're in the Alaskan backcountry, uh, Idahoan or you know Montanan backcountry where they need protection against larger animals like bears or, or moose or what have you. Otherwise, I would consider this completely unnecessary as a uh, kind of concealed carry weapon. If you pull that out in your home, obviously you're gonna stop the threat of whoever's trying to get in. Just think about that cleanup after. Like no, nobody sends yeah. a cleanup crew for you. Yeah, it's all you. Yeah. I'd, 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 you want it a little bit simpler, you know? Yeah. I will say this, the, this was awesome. It was really fun to fire uh, in terms of watching the effects on those ballistic dummies, but um, not a gun I'd like to fire all day. Uh, if you guys are wondering what this is, this is a Taurus. Um, uh, Taurus firearm, it's uh, the Raging, <laughs> Raging Hunter. <laughs> Why does that name sound so wrong? <laughs> what if instead of a uh, Raging Hunter, it was named Raging Boners, the best boners in the world? In any case, we're glad you guys could join us as we, uh, as we tried this guy out. Uh, it was really cool effects on dummy and probably one of the most violent shots that we've seen. And uh, it was a good time. But in any case, guys, uh, we appreciate you guys. Go train to something a little bit more, uh, I think, adequate, or go train to something that makes a little bit more sense. Uh, Glock 17, Glock 19, train. Uh, I'm much more concerned with a guy with a, you know, 18 rounds in his Glock 17 than I am with a guy with five rounds of 500 Smith & Wesson, especially if the guy with the Glock is training every freaking day. Oh uh, yeah, no, absolutely. All you have to do is dodge that once. <laughs> <laughs> if there's one thing we, we have realized, I understand a lot of concealed carry um, incidents are typically ended in a few rounds, but uh, I like having that extra insurance on me. Thank you guys for watching. Um, as always, uh, stay training, have fun, and we got nothing else for you guys. All right, final thing for you guys. Um, this is something that I was taught when I first got to my first unit. So uh, my, uh, my staff sergeant slid over a glass of water and he said, put your finger in the glass of water. So I put my finger in the glass of water. He said, all right, take your finger out. So I took my finger out of the glass of water. He said, what happened to the level of the water? I said, nothing. He goes, that is your impact on the Air Force. Go home to your family. So it's something that I've always considered when it comes to work. Make sure that you are uh, not sacrificing so much that you lose your family because that's never worth it. Work will always be there, um, but your family is what you're doing this all for. So make sure to put your priorities straight and do the right thing. So appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching. We got nothing else for you. Bop. I'm just glad it was uh, a glass of water, dude. I didn't know where that was going. <laughs>